Hey guys, this is Gorax. Today I would like to show you a new game in Might and Magic uh, universe. It's called Might and Magic Dynasty. It's a war game. So as I mentioned, it's a war game where you build your base, you, you, you produce your units and you, and you fight against uh, other players. It's basically a very uh, typical game compared if you play it games like uh, King of Avalon, uh, Rise of Kings, Iron Throne, and games similar to that, you'll be very familiar with this genre. So, as you can see, this is my city, I got dwellings where I produce my army, I got um, resource camps where I produce my resources, uh, I got tents where you can heal your units and other stuff, there's guild, guild battles, and stuff like that, but what what this game stands from the crowd is basically it's a skin of Heroes of Might and Magic, which I really like. And when you whenever you play a PVE mode called Expedition, you'll have the feeling of a uh, old Might and Magic games. So Expedition is your story based uh, campaign where you find against AI units. So let's go and begin one. I'm um, chapter four. I just started it, so I'm still in a honeymoon phase. However. There are quite a few positive things about that game that stand out. So basically you got your campaign, creation, and there are three factions to choose from. It's uh, he Heaven, it's Dungeon, and it's Stronghold at the moment. There will be more factions uh, later on. Sadly, none of my favorite is available, so I choose have Heaven as it's my third one. So as you can see, this is very similar to uh, other games like Art of Conquest and stuff. However, this is the feeling of Heroes of Might and Magic you get. This UE it looks like the Heroes of Might and Magic after uh, version 7, I believe. So whenever you play, you get this, you get chance to units to uh, get to uh, to join you, and then you get an enemy units that you need to fight. Okay, so let's fall in, let's fight this fallen sentinel. So when we fight, we will be um, moved to a grid-based map, and this feels like Heroes of Might and Magic. Okay, guys, you got turn base, and you got turns, and you got units. You can uh, withdraw all, set them up the way you want. Uh, obviously, you got this uh, tree here, so every troop counters every troop. And so what you want to do is, you can see here, I got mobile units in the bottom, archer units, and uh, guard units. So uh, when you press on it, you're going to spawn uh, your units. This is the uh, two angels that I got for free. You can move them about, set them up somewhere. So you, uh, angel is a mobile unit in this game. So I want him to get to the back row. Then I got uh, griffs and there are two there are different tiers. I only unlocked one and two, but I believe it goes up to tier six of your units. So what I want to do is uh, I want to kill these archers before they kill my units. And the thing is, uh, mobile units are countered by the defensive units, which is uh, these two units here, so I need to be smart about it. However, with Griffin's ability, which you might be familiar from uh, Heroes of Mind and Magic games, I can just jump to the back line. So this is what I'm going to do. I can set up four units at the moment. I'll get this defensive unit here. Uh, actually, I've used the wrong gray. Let's go with gray two. And I can put uh, my marksman here, and let's start the fight. So obviously... Uh, yeah, I don't have that many Archangels, but that is enough. So, obviously you can play the game on auto or manually. I prefer to play it manually because I really enjoy that type of uh, battle. So, your hero here in the top uh, bottom right corner, he has a spells. So, my hero has a spell of Celestial Armor, so it grants uh, his target shield absorb damage, which is quite useful. My strategy so far is uh, giving a shield to my uh, angel and attacking the units. Okay, so this is what I do. And each unit also has skills. As you can see, uh, angel resurrects fallen uh, uh, allies. And it works just like my magic. As you can see, I got high morale, so I can attack again. So let's do that. And that way I'll block, block these uh, second archers in this case. So as I mentioned before, Griff's uh, skill is jump to the back line. So this is what we're going to do. However, these two units will move, so it's not optimal to do it. But let's just predict where they're going to move. Let's predict they're going to move somewhere in the back row. And let's jump there. Okay, so now my defensive unit... Uh, as you can see, I can move, attack, or defend, just like in a 
original game so i'm gonna wait I'm gonna focus angel my shield is gonna absorb that damage so marksman skill can pierce through targets keep in mind i can also pierce through your target through your units so it's uh it's worth skipping that okay focus on the archers as you can see he used his skill and i believe i made a mistake because they're not gonna i'm sorry they're not gonna move they're gonna melee attack it okay so we got seraphin again okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna um just kill that off finish the arches works just like the game so he counters and now he's not gonna counter so there's only one counter attack okay guys so if you're familiar with these games you'll enjoy it but this is only for this pve content when you uh, haven't played a pvp yet but I believe it's going to be an automatic fight just to make sure it's uh, even grounds for the attacker and the defender okay so you continue the campaign got some banners we got artifacts and we got hidden treasures as well all that stuff is here it's a really nice game i really enjoy it so far i've been playing only two days okay so let's skip a bit now, on top of fighting against normal units, you will also encounter bosses, which change the fight quite significantly. Okay, as you can see, the bosses I get two um, against two bosses now, so it's not gonna be that easy. Okay, but I'm okay. Let's just go. So I'm gonna put some music while we fight, and you guys enjoy the music. So that was the boss fight. Now we're gonna collect uh, the resources, capture uh, orb hit, so that is going to boost my uh, orb production, and we're gonna get this obelisk. So this is chapter finished. Okay, let me just introduce more gameplay options for you guys. So keep in mind this game isn't soft launch yet, and there's a lot of that's going to be added to the game later on. So you got various heroes available in this game currently. It's Christian, Anger, Round Left, um, Ruin. I build I love these animations when they show up. Look at that Shiva's animation, okay. And there are legendary, epic, and normal heroes at the moment. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of heroes. We've got Crack Hack, three factions, and a couple of heroes available at the moment. So each hero has its own special specialization with uh, skills and different passive abilities. You can upgrade the stats of heroes using uh, hero tokens, which are available through the means of the game. And uh, you can boost experience of your heroes and you can uh, awaken them. You, can, you have a big talent tree. Every hero has a different ability. There's melee guard, defense, resource collection, stuff like that. So it's quite... Uh, in depth and this game has a lot of uh, things to ferret, uh, to think about then we got artifacts on a hero so this is a set you can put at the moment there's a basic, basic set that I have I haven't seen any uh, unique artifacts yet but they might be implemented later on so at the moment I've unlocked only three units 
and three unit dwellings so i got barracks where i can recruit vanguard units as, as you can see there are six tiers of them and then we got um, shooting range so that's uh crossbowmen's again six way six tiers and a griffin tide this is what i unlocked at the moment because my castle is level nine keep in mind i just barely started the game i'm joining it joining a guild and um it's quite a lot happening so basically in a guild you got your guild war which is rallies so you can clear this pve content called chaos towers uh, you got territory of the guild you got technology so this, this is a big technology tree to invest into and what stands out is you get these chances to do it every 25 minutes you get a chance to donate again there's free trees uh, to donate to which is quite complex um you obviously have a gift you, can, you get a gift from the pve content or the purchase gift uh, you also get you can check your members uh, you can sh you can give aid to your uh, to your guild to, to reduce the cooldowns so you get gu guild shop where you can buy different means uh, of uh, items that you'll need there are three basic resources gold lumber or and a fourth one will be unlocked at level 13 called crystals you also get a paid currency so let's see how pay to win this game is so on your first top up you'll get a legendary hero rosale and many people are using her she's quite good but it's nothing that will be a game changer okay guys then we go to value packs so for 9.99 4.99 which is quite cheap you get all this uh, stuff okay as you can see, there's nothing that will really uh, stand out. It's only resources and speed ups that you're buying. It's basically paying for progressing faster, which some will claim it's a pay to win. However, you're not buying artifact sets like it is in most of these games where you can buy at the best artifact set for 12, for 600 pounds and be the best guy on the server. This is basically just going to speed up your process. We got daily discounts, so you get a different uh, chest. Again, it's only speed ups and resources. There's nothing that will make you stronger. There is a VIP system, and I'm gonna mention that uh, in a while. And we got multiple days, so this is your basically a subscription based uh, purchases. And as you can see, it's speed ups, it's resources, and your. Um, dragon coins this is what it's called okay so it's still quite cheap keep that in mind still quite cheap and you got obviously a growth fund this is very typical for this kind of games however this war game also has a gacha elements so when you go to hall of heroes over here you can recruit heroes and you can use a normal dragon crystal which is five free every day or you can use an epic dragon crystal as you can see the epic one drops you heroes or hero shots and other uh, other resources normal one will give you only these six heroes and hero shots okay so if you want legendary heroes this is the way to get them and only at the moment the only one that is available through summon is crack hack and this way you'll get your hero shots to boost the star and awaken them i haven't spent any money on the game yet however if i've really enjoyed it, i'll probably buy some of the packs because they're quite cheap and at the moment i'm vip zero so let's go through vip levels and see what they give so as it stands out it's a very typical vip when it comes to the war games it boosts your ore production it boosts your resource production it boosts your uh free uh, speed up for the building technology and stuff like that and so let's see why it changes to more uh things okay so thing that stands out is vip level four at one extra marching queue so it is quite important because it gives you an extra uh resource gathering unit or even a uh, farming enemies easier level five enables monster kill i have no idea what that feature does yet maybe once i get to level uh, to vip five i'll ask one of my guildmates what it does i'll explain it in another video level six is also important permanently unlocks the second construction queue so you can do that by getting to vip six or you can be buying items in the game to unlock that and it's quite important at the start of the game when you start because you want to be you you'll have a short times and you want to make use of that as uh, much as possible okay this is where it gets interesting so starting from vip 12 you have troop damage increase then troop HP increase, 
healing speed, expedition troop limit, okay, so that's quite normal, and then march speed. So it's not the biggest boost, but if you get to VIP 15, look at these numbers, okay, so your troops will be 10% better than the enemy troops. However, it is important to note you can upgrade VIP using dragon coins. You don't need to spend to get VIP levels, and this is what I like, this is what should be implemented in every game that has a VIP, because it helps the free-to-play players and keep them interested in the game. So this is your VIP point shop, okay, as you can see, 5,000 points for 5,000 uh, dragon coins. It's, it's going to be quite expensive, however, you can get these coins for free and you can farm them in the game through PvE minus. Now let's move to the world map and see how it looks. World map unlocks once you uh, build watchtower, so I believe it was level 6 that I unlocked the world map. So this is the world map, as you can see there's quite a lot on it. You got these uh, yellow buildings, a capital in the middle, and you got a couple towers around here. These are different buildings that boost different stats. You can see that one, if you capture it, you get a creature recruitment and speed increased by 10%. It is very common for this kind of game, it's got like a wonder uh, in different games, so it's it will be interesting and see how it plays out. In 14 days they will get unlocked and we'll be fighting for them. So I'll probably make videos of the fights so we'll see how it is. More action will be shown in the next videos. And in the middle of the map we got uh, Wonder. Okay, it's called DI here. And uh, got different rewards from it you can get, which I'll explain later on. So let me just quickly explain what kind of buildings you can find on the map. So it's basically... Um, can have PvE content, Chaos of Tower that is farmable, as you can see, you can farm Dragon Coins here and other resources. This will be where you will be spending most of your stamina, you got monsters that drop uh, experience, as well as some um, Star Silver, which is good for your defense tower. Uh, you got enemy bases, your bases, you got resource styles, and uh, plenty of a lot of other things. You got mercenary uh, camps that if you attack, you'll get these units, okay, so this way you'll get plenty of units from different factions that can add to your um, to your formation. You also got a guild territory which you can expand using guild banners and if you're in their territory you'll be getting passive resources. So it's quite a complex game and I think, I believe it has a potential to be one of the good games on the market currently when it comes to the war games. As you can see this environment is live the monsters just move, they don't stand, it's quite a good graphics, you can zoom in, zoom out, find different things, you obviously have search functions, so you can search for whatever you want, and I really enjoy it at the moment, I'll give it a go, we'll see, as you can see there are different biomes, so you got uh, grass, snow and stuff like that, so let's see where it's uh, coming from, so that way you can scout, as well like even if a free-to-play player will be useful as a scout you'll be able to help your guildmates find enemies weak enemies this is why i like war games and i used to play quite a lot of them spend a lot of money on them and um still enjoy this genre i believe it's much better than gacha games because it's exciting okay guys this is it for today's video i'll make more videos about might and magic dynasty in the future and i'll see you guys around bye